Chapter 8 Elora settled onto her knees as Tara scooted closer. Her mind whirled. A week ago? Her life had a clear trajectory. It was almost laughable. She'd never imagined she would be here in the dead of night, on top of a hill beside the balancer's cottage with Jude, Shamir, and Tara, about to find an answer to the question she'd had for years. Whenever she'd imagined the moment she discovered she held the magic, it felt monumental, fantastical, easy. Not like this. This was nothing like playing in the hollow. Take the next step. Shamir held out the bottle, and they all extended their fingers for her to pour a drop. Hopefully that was all it would take. Tam hadn't been forthcoming with specific details on how to administer the elixir, and they couldn't ask him now. The amber liquid formed a perfect spe- The amber liquid formed a perfect spherical drop on Alora's skin. She tipped her finger, and it ran like thick honey. Shamir put a drop on her own finger last, then corked the bottle. The four of them sat in silence. Finally, Jude cleared his throat. Ready. The girls nodded in unison and brought the elixir to their tongues. In an instant, it was done. Frogs croaked in the woods. A light bug trailed a lazy path through the trees. Elora looked at her sister and friends and searched their faces for information even though she guessed the effect wouldn't be instantaneous. She put a hand on her chest in an attempt to calm her racing heart. Tara asked the question running through all their minds. Tara asked the question running through all their minds. How long do you think it will take? Elora shook her head. I don't... Her eyes widened, and she sucked in a breath as her mouth warmed. Heat infused through her tongue, like she'd chewed on ginger root. Her body froze, hyper-aware of the strange sensation flooding through her mouth. Tara gasped and reached for Elora's hand. Elora reached for Jude, then Jude and Tara reached for Shamir. They held hands in a circle, bracing themselves for whatever came next. It was as if a veil was being drawn over Elora's head and torso, a gauzy film sugarcoating all her worries and fears. Do you feel it? Elora whispered. Each of them nodded, and Elora forced herself to breathe. It's all four of us, Jude uttered. Jude uttered, his jaw flexed. We were right. All this time, our parents. Maybe they didn't know? Elora's breathing quickened. They had the magic. She was born of magical blood. They had to have known. Someone knew, Jude growled. Tara dropped her hands. Our people have lived in the mountains for generations and have always stood against the corruption of the order. Her face was wan. She needed to go back to sleep. Jude frowned. Nobody stands for anything. We've removed ourselves from the realm. His eyes burned as he stood and put his hands over his head, peering into the night, searching for an explanation he wouldn't find here. Maybe they sacrificed for what they believed was right, Shamir mused. Jude dropped his arms. They also kept the truth from us, from all of us. We were born with magical blood. That changes everything. It changed everything. Questions swor Questions swirled in Elora's mind, none of which were helpful. What would her life have looked like if she was born in the Enclave? Why had their families kept this information from them? Who else was of the magic? None of it mattered. If their families had kept this information from them, they wouldn't suddenly open up and share their darkest secrets. There was a chance they didn't even know the answers themselves. She couldn't spend her time wondering what her life would have looked like, what she wished it had been. She'd lived and arrived at this moment. All she could do was choose where she and Tara went from here. Jude drew a deep breath. Whatever they decided, we can't make the same mistake. He dropped back to his blankets and held his head in his hands. Laura, Shamir, I have to tell you something. I promise you won't be mad. Elora did not promise, but Jude told them anyway. As he spoke, 
She slipped her legs back under the blankets, still floating above her worries with the help of the elixir. So you only asked me about the magic because I used a word from the prophecy? Shamir asked. Jude nodded and she scoffed. That could have been anything. But you did. You did know something. Shamir shook her head in disbelief. Not really. Luckily, I knew someone who did, but what if I hadn't? Jude shrugged. Then I would have made something up, pretended I was kidding. Elora watched him, absorbing his words. His family had record books and scriptures in boxes in his mother's closet. He'd been studying the magic longer than she had. That night in the loft, when he'd asked her what she knew... Elora threw off her blankets and walked toward the woods. She was exhausted. A dull ache pulsed above her temples. Jude had lied to her, made her think he was curious, not that he was already convinced. He'd allowed her to make a fool of herself. Elora, wait. Jude ran up behind her and reached for her arm. She pulled it from him and folded her arms over her chest as she continued into the woods. Elora, I'm sorry. You're sorry? She whirled on him. You pretended you knew nothing. Pretended you were helping when... I was helping. I wasn't pretending about that. Elora threw out her hands. How am I supposed to know? I believed what you said. I... She stopped short and turned away from him, clenching her hands into fists. I believed you when you said you wanted answers. When you said you wanted me. She couldn't admit that part out loud. Her voice stuck in her throat as she blinked back tears. Ask me why I didn't tell you, Jude murmured. He stood directly behind her, and the warmth from his body sent a tingle down her spine. Elora couldn't speak, didn't want to do what he asked. Jude put a tentative hand on her waist, then pulled until she turned to face him. He put a finger under her chin and lifted her face. Please ask. Please ask. Elora shouldn't have allowed him to turn her toward him. Her insides turned to mush at the sight of his parted lips and pleading gaze. Why didn't you tell me? She whispered. His throat worked, but no words came out. I didn't tell you what I knew at first, because I had no other excuse. Excuse for what? Her whole body blurred into the night, except for the two places he touched her. Her hip and the tip of her chin burned under his touch. The moon, the stars, the dark shadows in the woods, none of them registered. The only thing she knew was Jude's face, his fingertips. To be close to you? Jude traced the line of her jaw. When Shamir told me you might know about the magic, I wanted to knock your door down that day. His touch pulled the anger from her, drawing it out like poison. I knew there was a reason I'd been pulled in your direction, but I didn't want to scare you. Then I worried what you might do if I told you everything. I thought it would be safer. Safer for whom? Elora cut in. She'd taken a risk in the loft that night. She'd told him everything, and not once had he alluded to his secret. For me. He leaned close and pressed his forehead to hers. I'm sorry. Elora breathed him in. The way she'd reacted to his admission underscored how much he meant to her. After only two days. Yes, they'd known each other for years, but not like this. How is it possible to care so much after so little time? I have one last thing I need to tell you. Jude's breath caressed her cheek. Elora tensed and Jude straightened, locking his hands around her waist. I was never planning to go back to Piatha. Elora frowned. But your family wouldn't let me go if they knew. The magic is calling me, Elora. I need to do this. After that night at Sina's, I don't know. I hoped we could do it together. Elora sighed and relaxed into him. That one word was all she needed.